Today I want to try something different. I want to recap a different program. This program was produced on NBC, which is uh, one of our national networks here in the United States, and was on from 2018 through 2020. The show is called Making It. The hosts were Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, who are comedians who are known probably for Parks and Recreation, which was a sitcom, which was very funny. They're obviously friends and they have a lot of fun together. It's very pun heavy, so that makes it sometimes difficult to watch. The judges are um, Simon Doonan, who was the creative director of Barney's at the time, and Barney's has now gone bankrupt and no longer exists, and Dana Isom Johnson, who is an Etsy, who was an Etsy trend expert, whatever that means. It sounds like a fun job. The program is a typical elimination competition program. There are nine contestants for the entire season, so each week somebody goes home. And what it celebrates is people who make crafts. People who make crafts, and these people were probably cast from uh, Instagram or blogs at the time, but clearly they, they're, very, they're very varied and very creative, and it's fun to see what they do. I enjoy it because I sort of have a creative brain, and I like to do things around the house and make crafty things, trying to make them not look like crafty things. But So for me, it was a lot of fun. The only way to see it now is on Prime Video. I think you can either rent it or buy it uh, because it was made on a network. Uh, it was a network program. They buttoned it up pretty securely, so it's you cannot find it on YouTube and and other places. So I wanted to do a quick recap just because I thought it would be fun. It doesn't mean I'm changing anything around here. I'm going to keep doing what I usually do, but it's fun sometimes to see what other people do, and and what we can do if we think about. Uh, quite frankly, to think about going beyond two dimensions. You know, we're in the business of making illusions, making something on paper appear like it has volume and form and mass. Um, but that this is this is different, and I think it's kind of fun. So just as an experiment, this is a recap of the program Making It, Episode 1, Season 1. Let's get started. And if you would consider it, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. I don't know that I'll be doing another episode of this program, but we'll continue with other recaps of Portrait Artist of the Year. Here are our hosts, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. And he's quite the craftsperson. He's a woodworker. And some of his work he shows in the program. So he knows what he's talking about. And Amy's just fun and makes everybody relaxed as does he. They're, they're clearly friends and joke around together. Our first judge is Simon Noonan, as I said, creative director of Barney's, really known for the window displays that he would do. They were way over the top, and he, he, he's immensely creative with unconventional pro projects, uh, using unconventional materials. Probably one of the reasons Project Runway uh, will use that as a challenge from the very beginning. I suspect design and art schools do use that as part of their curriculum. This is Danum Isom Johnson, who's an Etsy trend expert, and she's our second judge. Again, this was back in 2018, episode one, season one. So trends and things have changed since then, and we all know Etsy, to some degree, has a little bit of a troubled past in its history with makers. And that's what they call the people on this program, not participants, they call them makers. The first part of the program is called Faster Craft. You're given three hours to make a craft, and you're judged on this. This has nothing to do with the final judging. And what they had to do here was to transform themselves into an animal using their craft. Uh, Jeff is the f first one up. He saw himself as a bee. He uses paper for crafting. I remember him back from this program, and I, I just, I just really delighted in how fresh and beautiful everything that came off his fingertips was. So in there somewhere there's a bee, and this is cardboard and paper, and it's just beautiful. Uh, jo is an interior designer, and she created this bunny. I think we've all done maybe a project like this. <laughs> and so, um, but she completed the assignment. That was the point. She sees herself as a bunny, and, it, and it's, uh, you know, it's adorable. So, good for her. And and she has a carrot with it. 
Now, this is a highly produced program, so I suspect production probably had a plastic carrot to add because I don't know and suspect, in all fairness, because it is a competition show, that they can't know a lot in advance. But I, I got a feeling they do get some heads up of what's coming up. Robert is the nef next maker. He's a design maker, and he created this puppet theater. This, I think, is just fantastic because it's got the outline silhouette of his head and then inside his head, you can see that it's himself as a figure with the animal on top. And you can he had different animals you could hold on sticks and then this tissue paper window. So with a projection device, you could see what was happening inside his brain. I just thought it was incredibly clever, a really good way of interpreting the, the task at hand. And, and it's beautiful, too. He was immensely creative, so I, I really, I suspected that he would, he would do very well on this program. I don't recall, uh, and as we all, all know, hashtag Joe was always wrong. I don't know if he did well or not. Now, Billy is the next one up. Billy is a felt artist. Felt is a really easy product to work with because you, it, you, all you have to do is cut it and glue it, basically. There's pretty much n not a lot of sewing involved. It's, it's very malleable, and, and this is a stuffed pig. It's very cartoony, very graphic, and kind of adorable. So, that, so that's what he came up with. Uh, our next one up is Amber. Amber is a craft blogger. And she, oh no, it's not Amber. Okay, next one up is Keem. Keem is a woodworker. I loved this because, remember, it was to transform yourself in an animal. And he said, he, you know, he's kind of shy. So he made this tortoise shell out of wood and paint. And it, he's inside the shell and guarded. I thought that was pretty clever. Is it the most beautiful object in the world? No, but it's clever. This is Amber now, who is the craft blogger. And she did this unicorn head. This kind of craft has become incredibly popular, and I think you can even buy in kits now. And it's it's adorable and cute, but uh, on to the next. Next is Nicole. Nicole is a woodworker, and she created a bee. She used wood and, pa and tissue paper. So it's an interesting looking thing. Uh, very interpretive, very sculptural. And so good for her. All right, the next one up is Gemma. And Gemma did an owl. Gemma is a hodgepodge crafter. Now, when I read that and saw hodgepodge, I don't remember what hodgepodge is, but there was a time when everybody was um, using magazines and, and things, and hodgepodge is a type of glue product that, that uh, when it dries, you can see through it. So it's, it's decoupage is basically what it, it is, glue for decoupage which is a trendy thing. So it's a lot about using little different things and gluing them onto other surfaces. And that's basically what she did here to create an owl. So those are all the contestants for the faster craft. And they'll be the same contestants for the longer craft. But the first faster craft winner is indeed going to be Robert, who created that puppet theater. So that was nice to see. Now we get on to something called the Master Craft. Now, in the Faster Craft, as I said, they have three hours, but I suspect they get some help as well. Now, Master Craft, they don't tell you how long it takes, but their assignment for today is to make an unconventional photo album and also to make an unconventional family quilt. That's interesting to have two different assignments at one time, so that's going to test their ability to think creatively. Here they are lined up with their final projects for the judges to look at, and one will be selected as the winner for today, and will get a badge, and one will be selected to go home, and then we'll be left with eight contestants. Here's our first one up, Jeff. Jeff is the one who did that, um, the sunflower that you saw. I just think this is beautiful. He's made an accordion-like photo album on the left, and his quilt is paper craft on the right. He's stylized people that he knows from his life and put those hearts around a very graphic looking installation. I just think it's really, really clean, carefully thought out, and is a modern take or, or a different take on, say, a quilt and a photo album. I just think it's immensely creative. 
So I like that one. The next one up is Keem. Keem built a quilt and a photo album. The photo album is on the left, which are those shelves. And then he's inserted photographs in some manner inside them. And then the quilt, rather than being in paper or fabric, is made out of small pieces of wood. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, both are three-dimensional. I like how he carried the motif of the quilt onto um, the middle part of that frame as well. Yeah, that's so pretty. And what a brilliant idea to think about quilt, you know, which is really just a repetition of pattern, often using color, but in that case not. Now, Amber did a quilt out of paper, and her album is basically some photos inside frames. I don't see the creativity there. But in, and in the quilt, um, I guess it's using paper and then, even, you know, the tassels are paper, so it's imitating cloth, and, and that's somewhat clever. And Amber had done that unicorn, so um, she's kind of, uh, for me right now, a little bit of a one note. I'm not finding her incredibly um, creative thinking outside the box. This is Gemma. Gemma, remember, is our hodgepodge lady. And what she did was she painted on embroidery hoops. Embroidery ho hoops are almost a relic of an older time because... You just don't see people doing embroidery anymore. And then she uh, glued photo photos onto embroidery hoop, hoops and hung them on a rack. I don't find that tremendously exciting. So uh, I think she might be in some danger of going home, but uh, I'm always wrong. Well, in this case, who knows? I don't know these judges. This is Nicole's. And Nicole, she did the quilt on the left and the photo album on the right. And the photo album is using kind of quilt-like techniques, but using photographs in order to piece them together. And Nicole had done that B, which was the over, it was tissue paper over wood structure. So I can't quite get a handle on what she's all about yet. I find this um, interesting, but um, but also a little bit, puzzling and not nearly as interesting as some of the more three-dimensional uh, things that we've had coming. All right, Joe's quilt. Joe did this. I, I think this is really just uh, wonderful. Uh, Joe had done the bunny in the Faster Craft, so I wasn't too excited about her, but I really like this. Um, she's taken pieces of wood and then have photo references put on the wood. In other words, what she's done is she's done two for one. This is her photo album and this is her quilt and it's put together with eye hooks. And if you look closely, you can see it's three dimensional. It's actually done a little bit like a diorama would be done. I just think it's, uh, it, it's in the line of people who like to work with miniatures, which is a whole different creative pursuit. I think it's really graphic and I think it's, it's kind of charming. All right, the next one up is Robert. Now, Robert is the one that did that puppet theater. And what he did was a very monochromed wood piece, which kind of looks like a family tree in a way. So this was his quilt. It's a nice interpretive way of thinking about a quilt, maybe in a just a completely different way and void of color. And this is inexplicable to me. This is his photo album, and he superimposed photos on spools. This, I, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing to get uh, other than he's put photos on different surface than you would normally think. So that was interesting, but not truly conceptual. This is our last one. This is Billy, who was the felt artist who did the pig. His photo album is uh, the five and the five because he's put fo um, photographs inside the five and the five. And then he's done um, felt to create this very graphic image of a sports figure. Maybe it's him. Now the judging begins and we're going to find out who stays and gets a badge and is in line for the $100,000 prize and who has to go home. Here are our contestants. As I said, there are nine altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. Well, well, I was wrong all along, obviously. My eyes don't deceive me. There are eight contestants. So after today, there will be seven. So it, it's an extremely short program, very, so different from the other programs that are being re recapped on this channel. Here are our hosts and our judges about to give the news, and we, we've all seen this done. 
you know, we have the good news and then we have the, as the British say, commiserations for, <laughs> for those who did not win. I love that word, commiserations. I don't hear it on American television ever. Oh, first, so who won the Mastercraft? Who won the unconventional photo album and unconventional quilt challenge? We're about to find out. I have no idea who it's going to be. And, uh, you know, I don't have any allegiance to this program in any way, like I do to Portrait Artist of the Year. The winner is Jo, who had that combination where she combined both the photo album and the quilting idea together in sort of a, I guess you could argue, a 3D kind of presentation. And it's, it's lovely. That's what I'll say about it. It's really lovely. It's certainly pleasing when you look at it as an image and pleasing when you look at it in terms of its softness of color. And, and when you come in close, you get a lot of detail that are meaningful to her and to her family. And that's, that's really what matters. Now, the harder part, of course, for them is who has to go home. There really are no stakes here. I mean, if you've been on this program, then you, you, you've probably seen a boost to your business and your Instagram and, and whatever else you're, you're doing. It must be fun to fly out to California. And, you know, on a production that's done by NBC, a major network, you're going to be wined and dined a little bit. You're not going to make money, but you're going to have a fun experience. And they're all lovely people. And Gemma is the one who's going home. Gemma was a hodgepodge artist. She did both the owl and then she did the photo albums uh, and quilt, which were on embroidery rings. So I don't mind her going home at, at all. It's, it's um, this is interesting, but not something that, uh, that I want to see more of. So remember to keep the whites, your paper white, your paint wet, mask for value, mix for color. Uh, please consider joining my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.